Hello again. We're going to look at using fractions to solve indirect proportion problems. How can we tell it's an indirect proportion as a problem as opposed to a direct proportion one? We have to ask, ask ourselves this question. As one of the things goes up, does the other thing go up? Or if it goes down, does the other thing go down? If that's the case, then it's direct proportion. But if one of the things goes up, like for instance time, as the speed goes down, or the other way around, the time of a journey will go down as the speed goes up, in other words they're working in opposite directions, then it's an indirect proportion problem. And we solve them slightly differently. Here's a concrete example. It takes four hours to travel 50 miles per hour um, to complete the journey. How long will it uh, the journey take if traveling at 80 miles an hour? Now, this is indirect proportion because as the speed goes up, the journey time goes down. So we solve it like this. Here's our first bit of information, 80. But this instead of going on the top of the fraction, goes underneath. The second bit of information, the information with the same units, 50 goes on top. So they swap over in comparison with direct proportion problems. And then the rest is as before. You multiply it by the third number. So let's get the calculator to do everything here. So that's 50 over 80 times 4. And there's our answer as an improper fraction. Turn it to a decimal. There it is, 2.5 hours. Let's see that again. It takes five men six days to build one house. How long will it take eight men? Now, will the length of time go up as the number of men go up? Or will it go down as the number of men go down? No. To build a house, the more men you have, the quicker you build it. Or the fewer men you have, the slower you build it. So our key bit of information, the bit about which we're answering, we write down first, yeah, as before, it's always the first thing we write, but it becomes the denominator, the bottom part of the fraction. And the other bit of information with the same units, the five, goes on top, it becomes the numerator. And then by six days, let's put those units in. So 5 over 8 times 6. There's the answer, and as a decimal, it's 3.75 days. Final look at indirect proportion. It does require us to think. It takes 250 tiles with an area of 180 centimetres squared to cover a bathroom wall. How many 240 centimetres squared tiles will it take to cover the wall? Now, Will the number of tiles go up as the size, the area, goes up? Or will the number of tiles go down as the area goes down? If that's the case, it's direct proportion. But let's stop and think. The bigger the area, the fewer, the smaller number of tiles. Or the smaller the area, the greater, the bigger number of tiles. So this is indirect proportion. So, there's our bit of information. That's a big part, most important bit of information, the 240. And because it's indirect proportion, this, the first thing we write down, becomes the denominator. And where's the other bit of information with the same units? There it is. It goes on top when it's indirect proportion. And multiply it by the third bit of information, the bit we haven't used. And let's see what we get. 180 over 240 it's, we need 187.5 tiles does that fit in with what we were thinking yeah there is an indirect pro um, proportion here the, the number of tiles and area are in indirect proportion so the bigger the tiles the fewer we would need Okay, thank you for listening.